Okay, I'm back in the, the kitchen after doing the sky bang. It's time we get to the stitching portion of the program. two different things right now. We're going to be stitching the cap toe on and going to be stitching uh, the back panels together. So first, uh, let's, let's do the all work on these back panels. So I have this stack of cork that I'm going to later use to put in the shoe. But right now it's a pretty good like backing for what we're about to do. So I have this, it's a diamond bladed awl. Uh, let's see if you can see, it's like, so it's wide and it's narrow and it's, uh, I've sharpened it down on a stone. I'm not very good at that, so I'm not gonna make a tutorial about that. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all along these dots in the back and I'm gonna make uh, 45 degree holes slanted all uniform and put my finger against the side of the flat, the flat side of the blade right here so I can keep it uniform. And everything's gonna be uniformly angled. So, yeah, so that when I stitch it, it all looks uniform. And we're gonna come through and I should get more light. And okay, so I have this blade, and I'm gonna take a look at this first hole up here. Actually, sorry, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do these both at the same time. These are evenly matched pieces, so I can stack them. So I was just gonna be doing one and then the other, but this will actually make sure that they're perfectly uniform. Uh, so when they stitch together, they'll meet together perfectly. I'm gonna square off the top, so I wanna make sure, that I'm more concerned that this top, the throat of the boot is gonna be level rather than the bottom of the boot. If the bottom of the boot, just cause differences when I'm cutting, if the bottom of the boot isn't perfectly lined up, it's fine cause I'm gonna get pulled underneath the boot anyway. But this throat has to match perfectly. So I'm gonna come right here, 45 degree angle, and bam, right through. Nice and easy, next one. And next one, these divots actually make it really easy to puncture the holes. You wanna make sure you're going in as straight as possible when using two, uh, two layers like this. And so I'm just coming, resting the pivot of the tip of the blade in this little divot, poking through. And just go on one by one. This one actually doesn't matter all that much if it looks perfect because this is one of the few seams that is not gonna show. And I always wanna keep the angle like 45 relative to this line. So it's not gonna be 45 relative to this back part the whole time. It's gonna change with this curve. It's gonna be relative. The 45 degree angle uh, is gonna be relative to what I'm curving with. And just a note, like, it doesn't matter if it's 45 that way or 45 that way. It's just about, once again, about consistency. It's gonna matter when you stitch, uh, that you pay attention to which way, whichever way you did it, because you want to have the stitches dip into the part closest uh, to the previous stitch. That's what the angle is gonna do. Make sure my blade is still there. This all handle is pretty terrible. I got it off Amazon for super cheap and it does not hold this blade very well at all. But it's 
what I got. I actually have a better all handle. I don't remember even what's stuck in that one. I, I should change them. But I think uh, the other all handle just has a round all in it uh, that I was using last time I welted a pair of shoes. And I had to press through the sole. I needed the better all handle for that just because it was such, you know, heavy work. I had to really press that thing. And so these aren't going to matter all that much. And honestly, the whole thing's not going to matter terribly much because I'm using color match thread so that it's not going to show up as much, which is definitely a must uh, for beginners in stitching on stitching. You don't want to use contrasty thread or else you're going to see every mistake in the stitching. So yeah, it came through. This is the back piece. You can see the things came through pretty nicely and this is the front piece. And then in the next phase, we're going to stitch these together right against each other. Um, I'm actually going to look at a sewing machine tomorrow that has a zigzag function, which uh, would come up here and it would you could just zigzag between this whole thing and then work it so it just zigzags and binds the two pieces together by itself, which would be really nice if that works out. Uh, it's a pretty old machine and a pretty cheap machine, but the guy says it works, so we will see. So, and then on this piece, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Uh, we're going to line it up with this vamp that we have cut out and on this one I'm gonna be a little more careful that it doesn't move while I'm doing my all work I'm gonna clip them together some people will glue them and then later uh, you know just wipe the glue away or like you know, if you glue this whole thing on you can still peel it back but I found a clip to work pretty, pretty decently for what I'm getting at. On these big pieces, clips are nice. On little tiny pieces where every single tiny millimeter matters and things want to wiggle around because the leather is lightweight, those, it is important to glue those ones together with, before you start stitching. A lot of, some people will one of the reasons you want a post bed sometimes is because, you know, how this piece is eventually going to wrap around the toe. Uh, some people will, will want to stitch it pre-wrapped. Uh, because as you can see, even just from doing that, there's already this gap here. Because it makes the cap, the cap toe is going around a greater circumference because it's on the outside. So if you, you can, if you want to like put like a can of something right here, a block, and so that you can keep this wrapped and shaped like a toe every time uh, with every little movement. But it'll also stretch and you don't have to do that that much. Um, but that is, if you're being a perfectionist about it, uh, that's what a post bed sewing machine is for. So you can, you can keep it like that. Um, Keep it angled like that, or you could just, you know, make your own post out of something solid. I'm measuring this. I'm just measuring these two little points right here where it comes the lowest. They're both two inches from the cap toe. And that was the same with the other boot. I just wanted to be uniform. And so I'm going to come through and do this top layer of, uh, of stitching. And uh, you know, on the previous one, what I did was I poked, I alled out all the top stitches, and then I actually stitched all of them before alling out the second row, just because of, uh, just because that would then hold it in place. I didn't have to use these clips anymore. It was held in place by a stitch, which is probably a good way to do it. Uh, so I'm probably going to do that again. Uh, so I'm only going to do one of these rows. And on this row is where I'm going to 
do my stitching demonstration. I want you to do one stitching demonstration on the proper way to stitch. Well, probably not even that proper. There are, there's a guy that makes a really good video. It's like two hours long on how to stitch leather. And I would recommend that you learn from him rather than me. If you want to, you know, have a decent stitch. But I'm going to, we're doing a completionist kind of project. So I'm going to show you what I do. And that was a little wonky on that one. The blade slipped a little bit. Eh, it'll be fine. can't sweat every tiny mistake or else I will never get done and I'll be starting over ad nauseum but uh, I do try to not let myself get away with big mistakes if there's like something structural that I messed up or a measurement that has been botched I've been pretty good about starting over I don't want to I want to make a pair of shoes I'm actually going to wear and not one that's just going to sit around as a testament to, oh, next time I'll change this. I don't want to constantly be trying to make the same pair of shoes over and over again because I want to move on to new projects. I want to try new pairs of shoes. Yeah, so there, there we go, that's all all about. Uh, if you're doing a non uh, full cap toe like I am, if you've cut this layer, you can cut the bottom layer out right below this line and then skive it, and you'll wanna skive that out. That's another spot you'll wanna skive. And then this will only be one layer thick. And that's definitely gonna help you in the, uh, the lasting phase. And it's a more traditional way to do it uh, for a sleeker toe, but I have kind of a narrow toe box on the last I'm using, so I want to do it this way. At least I want to try it this way. I can always cut it out later if I need to. Oh, and I'm back to, you know, drinking booze, making shoes. I eat. This is uh, in honor of uh, Infinity Wars coming out. This is from my Infinity Bottle, which is uh, something I think I learned on Reddit. That is, uh, you take a empty bottle that you have around, and every time you finish off a bottle of whiskey, you pour the last shot or two into that bottle, and then it becomes a blend of everything that you're finishing off. And then once in a while, I take a take a drink out of it, and it's it's pretty good. It's got a little bit of peat. Um, I've got some nice stuff in here. There's some Arbeg, some Hibiki, uh, some Westward, uh, some, I think there's some rye in here, maybe some Basil Hayden's. I think the last thing I put into it was, uh, yeah, it was a sherry rye with 5% sherry in it. That was the last thing that went in. It made it a little sweet. But I like the light smoke on it. But yeah, so now that we have punctured the holes, let's get to the stitching.